In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, for your faithful attention to all our needs and for gathering us together in a family of faith, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for your guiding work that points us to him. We thank you, Lord, for our children and the miracle of life that they represent. We thank you, Lord. For our Christian school and for the teaching and training that has occurred through the efforts of pastors, teachers, and many others, we thank you, Lord. Remember, gracious Lord, all the children of our school. Surround our children with your love and protect them by your power. Remember, gracious Lord, those who are graduating here tonight. Guide and keep these young people true to you and your word. Remember, gracious Lord, our parents. Strengthen all parents for their important task and grant them wisdom, patience, love, and understanding. Remember, gracious Lord, our pastors and teachers. Strengthen us in our faith and in our abilities to teach and share your love with our pupils. Give blessings and joy and patience and wisdom to these ministers of your word. So rule our hearts by your Holy Spirit and enable us to grow in faith and in the knowledge of your will through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. First reading is Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, There is no salvation for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be on your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Um, welcome friends, family, teachers, and everyone else here today, especially my classmates of the graduating class in 2021. Many people mark their journeys throughout life counting their successes, others their failures. I'm not sure what's right, the celebration of successes or the record of failures, but I think that it's important to have people with you, however you may measure your life. People will share the laughter and the tears with. For example, today we graduate from eighth grade. That's a huge step in our lives. Think about it. Some of us have been in this school for up to nine years. That's more than half of our lives. But we made it, and we did it together. We have grown, changed, and become strong in faith. From kindergarten to now eighth grade graduation, we have all developed and matured. Well, some of us have matured. Um, God has made it possible for us to get through all the challenges of middle school and come out of them stronger and better. Now that we have passed middle school, read a bunch of pointless books that we have all already forgotten, and mastered the art of procrastination, it's time for us to move into the next part of our lives, high school. 
I know many of us will not be going to the same high school, but I'm truly grateful for all the time we spent together. I may forget a lot of the things that I learned at the school, but I know that I will never forget that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and that while friendships may come and go, the memories you make on the lay way will last forever. Thank you, and one last shout out to Mrs. Robinson, because you were just the best teacher ever. No questions asked. Thanks. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. A reading from St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Reading from 2 Timothy chapter 2, flee youthful lusts, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Avoid foolish, ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient in humility, correcting those who are in opposition if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Dear eighth graders, I am so thankful for having had the opportunity three days a week this whole year to meet together with you to study. We called this, at least it was on your report cards, eighth grade Bible study. We studied important things like the commandments, God's merciful love in Christ. And these really are the ultimate realities of life. In fact, we could probably have called that class Reality 101. As, you cho as your first scripture reading, Psalm 3 said, there are a lot of people who scoff at this and say there is no salvation in God. And they want us to believe all sorts of unrealities, like the very first one in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent told Eve that when you eat of this free tree, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God. And it didn't stop there. We studied the Tower of Babel, at least you did for sure in seventh grade, and how in pride humanity thought they could do whatever they wanted. Another great unreality. 
the Bible tells us that the idolatry of the world is perhaps the highest form of unreality. Paul said, an idol is nothing in this world. And Samuel said, do not turn aside to empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. We also looked at some of the things the world tells us are realities, but in actuality are not. These were some of the isms that we talked about. Capitalism, Marxism, LGBTQism, relativism, humanism, nihilism, godless economics, unbiblical sexual license, human philosophy, all these things, while the world says these are so real, in actuality they are unrealistic because they do not address the real problem of sin. Laziness and greed destroy countries. Sex for its own pleasure destroys families and children. Human self-centeredness only leads to pride, which finally falls to despair. These unrealities can only be cured by the reality, and that is our sinless Savior, Jesus. Arising all of that, out of all of this, is Jesus of Nazareth. And you've been learning about him since Jesus' time in preschool. There we've learned of God's love for this world, his sacrifice for this world, and as Paul tells us, flee youthful lusts, pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. Your chosen class verse is from Psalm 20. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. I can guarantee you that your plans will succeed when the desires of your heart are like the ones Paul describes, righteousness, faith, love, and peace. But not only does Paul tell us that these should be in our hearts and in your hearts, but God wants them in the hearts of all people. And so Paul says that we should be gentle in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. The world needs repentance and truth and, yes, sanity. And above all, it needs to be freed from the snare of the devil. But how? It will happen when you guys resist the snares of the devil. Remember one of our learning by heart passages. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. The devil prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. As you resist those evils and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, God will make sure that others in this world see it as well. When you pursue friendships with people in this world, and yet remember the most important friendship is the one Jesus has with you, that friendship will rub off on others, and that is how they will be brought to their senses and find their salvation. We called it eighth grade Bible study, but it could be just as well called Reality 101, as I said. Just as two and two is four, Abraham Lincoln was a president, and deoxyribonucleic acid is real, so also are the commandments, the triune God, repentance, forgiveness, faithful living. These things are real. We read as our last part of our class this year, Peter's first letter. And I'm going to end by leaving you with his last sentence there in his great little letter, kind of like a little catechism covering many of the basics of Christian faith, the realities, the ultimate realities of life. I have written to you briefly, exhorting and declaring, this is the true grace of God. Stand firm in it. That's the best that I or anyone can give you. Stand firm in those realities of life in Jesus. Amen.
Good evening, and this is our 37th year of offering a quality Christ-centered education while serving students from 21 different communities. And we've had many honor students that later go on to high school, even universities to become honor students at their given schools, as well as salutatorians and valedictorians. This has been possible only with the partnership of the home and the teachers involved. And I wanna thank God for his continual blessing on our school and the families that have been touched. I pray that families at Good Shepherd will continue to be blessed through the efforts of everyone involved. Students who are in the National Honor Society, please stand. And please join me now in congratulating them on their accomplishments. You may be seated. Each year we honor the top four students of the graduating class. This honor is based on the grade point average earned during their seventh and eighth grade. This year, just two hundredth of a point separated the top two honors, the salutatorian and the valedictorian. At this time, I would like to go through and do the presentations of those awards. Our fourth honor student, if he would come forward, Andrew Mosky. Our third honor student, Jacob Kober. Our a salutatorian would be Emma Hartman. Our valedictorian for this year's class, Joseph Feldhaus. Let us congratulate these students on their accomplishments. Our next award is the American Legion Award. One boy and one girl is actually chosen and students rate each other in the areas of citizenship, leadership, academics, and Christian character. I'd like to read to you the certificate in which they will be receiving. The American Legion Certificate Award of School Award. This certificate of distinguished achievement is awarded to of Good Shepherd Lutheran School in recognition of attainment acquired in the winner of the American Legion School Award in further recognition of the possession of those high qualities of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service which are necessary for the preservation and the protection of the fundamental institutions of our government and the advancement of society. This award is made by the American Legion, Leighton Evett, Post 365, Collinsville, Illinois, on this date, May 20th, 2021. And the recipient for the girls would be Emma Hartman. And for the boys would be Jacob Kober. Thank them. All. 
We are now ready for the presentation of the class. Chairman of Good Shepherd Board of the Christian Day School, members of the board, I am pleased to report on behalf of the faculty of Good Shepherd Lutheran School that these, the members of the school's eighth grade class, have met the requirements of the state of Illinois and the additional expectations of the school, and so qualify for the graduation to the next level of academic training. I invite the chairman of the Christian Day School Board, Mr. Hartman, Pastor Walther, and Pastor Adel to assist me with the presentation of the diplomas. We ask that you hold the congratulations for these students until all have received their diplomas. The Good Shepherd class of 2021 will receive their diploma and also a special cross. And I'll explain the cross in just a minute. If I could have those individuals come forward, please. As I speak to you about a special cross, John Robert Ashcraft, member of Good Shepherd Lutheran School, alumnus of class 1984-85, first year class. He has been making rock crosses for over a year now for the days he was not working. Think about what we were going through. These were the days of COVID, which kept him from being here as an ECC volunteer. He's actually a trained teacher. It was to his ability of a way to contribute to Christian education from quarantine. The cross making starts with sorting through small landscape boulders at a stone yard. The large cobbles are scored with a diamond saw blade and split with steel wedges. These blocks are flattened with a large diamond grinder to sit flat on a masonry saw. The blocks are sliced into slabs on a wet saw. They dry to find falls, uh, flaws in the stone. Cross patterns are made and traced into the stone with a brass pencil. Each cross is cut out and edged, beveled, one at a time, by hand, on the saw. The crosses are polished in a three-day, five-step tumbling process. They are dried, and a coat of beeswax is applied to hide any saw marks on the inside corners. Last year, he added up all this time, which averaged 30 minutes across. What an awesome gift from John as a reminder of a Christian edu education here at Good Shepherd. And now the Good Shepherd class of 2021 may come forward for the presentation of their diplomas and receiving their special cross. Miguel Billings. This is the time to take the pictures. <laughs> okay. Caleb Buchanan. Danielle Carey. Okay. 
Rebecca Dawn Dixon. Joseph L. Feldhaus. Carter Harrington. Emma Isabel Hartman. Kate Irene Yosey. Evan Aaron Klostemeyer. Jacob Andrew Kober. Addie Grace Lingefelter. Lewis Michael Harlow, Maine. Andrew David Mosky. Tannen Nenninger. Jack William Phelps. Connor Glenn Pickering. Drake Thomas Polachek. Timothy William Harold Rainey.
Ryder Kemper Rayburn. Lucas Robinson. Colin James Schlechty. Ryan Jean Sign. Evan Wilkinson. Madeline Isabel Zika. May God continue to bless you in all the years to come. Let's congratulate these fine young people. Other special people are with us tonight, or maybe viewing online, without whom this graduation would not be possible. And with the help of God, you have brought them through the many years. Would parents, grandparents, please stand? Would parents, grandparents, please stand? We didn't practice that. <laughs> and graduates, would you join me in thanking them? May be seated. Thank you. COVID-19 has forced us to transform so many of the activities we normally have done to fit new and different circumstances. Our fifth through eighth grade this year, spring, choir, band, concert, was outside in the back with the thanks of Mr. Stegman. We appreciate that. We accomplished our spring musical, not in person, but in a virtual fashion, with the thanks of Mr. Stegman and the homeroom teachers. We are very thankful of that. We accomplished our eighth grade class trip with the organization from Mrs. Kober and Mrs. Hartman, and we're very thankful for that. Our school building has been open since August 18th. We praise God and thank our teachers and the parents and students working together in a healthy manner for the safety of all. This pandemic has altered the fabric of how we teach, how we learn, how we connect, but it has not shaken the core of what our school does, which is to take care of students and to prepare them not only academically, but spiritually for the next. Who would have thought last year at this time, we would be teaching in person and synchronous learning for some students. This crisis continues to bring uncertainties. But we look to the future for some type of normalcy. The bottom line is we have all made it through our partnership and offering a Christ-centered education, 
No one or no pandemic crisis can take away that from you. You have made it and you are ready for the next chapter in your lives. So I say embrace it, remember what you were taught, and stay in prayer with your journey in life. I'm very proud to be your principal and to stand here this evening promising families that they would not be alone, and we weren't. There was a partnership. Their children have been in the hands of dedicated and hardworking Christian teachers over the years who saw their needs. I pray God will continue to bless our eighth grade families and remember our theme for this year, eighth graders, secure in his arms. We had a little difficulty with that, not knowing what it was. It was great though. Always remember, it's a great day to be a charger. And I hope to see all of you, as I said last year, to our alumni night to take a special group picture with our 2019-2020 class as well as your class 2021. At this time now, if I could have our valedictorian, Joseph Feldhaus, to come forward, please. Welcome teachers, pastors, parents, relatives, friends, and especially my classmates of the graduating class of 2021. Before I get started, I'd like to thank each of you on behalf of the graduating class for coming here tonight to celebrate our graduation. Throughout the years at Good Shepherd, we have had many different experiences from people starting in kindergarten and people starting in eighth grade. Sadly, we have lost a good number of students throughout the years, but we've also gained a lot of new people. Thankfully, we have also been able to have many teachers throughout the years that we have been here. I'd like to thank all of the teachers because without them, the, our graduation would not have been possible. I would also like to give an extra thanks to Ms. Robinson because she remains one of the class's favorite teachers throughout all the years. It is crazy to look back and think about all the countless memories that we have made at Good Shepherd, all the fall festivals that we have gone to, to the school picnics, and one of the memories that was seven years ago in first grade, the Thanksgiving feast. We all probably remember, well at least, for the, well, at least the people that were here for it, dressing up as pilgrims and Indians, and having a feast with our parents. We've also been able to go on many field trips from going to botanical gardens in second grade and playing tag in the rain, and going to outdoor ed in sixth grade. It is crazy to think that we were just starting our junior high years, not even two years ago, but with the expectation of, of those years to be like years previously. But that would not be the case when the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, changing the rest of the, our years at Good Shepherd. From the two week break to the online learning and to finally being able to come back the next year and finish our last year, but with the exception of wearing masks. I'm pretty sure that wearing a mask was not our most desirable choice, but it was really the only choice that there was to be able to attend in person. I would say that it all worked out in the end because we were all able to gather here today and celebrate our graduation. There are many memories that we have made through our final two years, some being good and some being bad. Some of the better memories that will stick with us as we graduate from junior high are the many youth group meetings, the six flag trips, and the ski trip that was the beginning of this year. One of the things that most of us will remember from eighth grade is the class trip. From being lost in the woods and ending up in cornfields and cemeteries to wiping out on treadmills. I say that this, there were many memorable memories made. The class verse that we have chosen this year is Psalm 20 verse four. May give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. I would say that this is a rather fitting verse for our class because we will all be going our separate ways to different high schools and we all have plans and different interests for our lives. With God, we'll be able to accomplish any of these plans that we desire in our hearts, no matter how big or small. As we go our separate ways, I hope that we all keep our faith and it strengthens as we continue to grow. All in all, I would say that we, have ha we will have left Good Shepherd with good memories and some bad ones, but mainly good ones. It's crazy to think back in kindergarten that we were sitting on a rug listening to our teachers, to being here today and standing in front of you all. I believe that we have all matured and grown up with some being more noticeable than others. I hope that as we go our separate ways in high school, we remember all the good times that we have had at Good Shepherd, also remembering all the memories that we have made with our friends from here. Thank you. Please rise for prayer. Almighty God, 
We give you thanks that you not only rule over your church, but also all of history. You are the God of creation and order and beauty. We ask that you would grant your favor to those who are graduating and assure them of your loving presence and protection. Bless what they have learned here at Good Shepherd. Pour out your Holy Spirit on their hearts and minds so that they will truly love and revere you. Confess the faith with joy and boldness. Live according to your commandments and praise and glorify you as their faithful God and Lord for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, guide these students as they are called to various vocations, that they may serve you well and usefully, develop, developing their talents for your glory and the welfare of their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.